Sonic Adventure was the first mainline 3D Sonic game and the big launch title for the last Sega console, the Dreamcast. It's one of the most ambitious games in the Sonic the Hedgehog franchise, marking a lot of firsts for the series outside of being a 3D game. It showcased the now modern redesigns of the Sonic cast, it had multiple unique campaigns for each of the six main playable characters, and had a bigger emphasis on plot with cutscenes and voice acting to support that element. That's Eggman! I wonder what happened to Sonic. Good, good, got, got it, great, good. Though to be honest, I'm not the best at Sonic games. I enjoy playing them, but as my good friend put it while I was streaming the game in a Discord call, I don't have the Sonic gene, so I decided I'm not the best person to judge if Sonic Adventure as a game works, especially with all the various revisions it's gotten over the years adding more glitches. So instead, I'm gonna analyze a specific point of the game its aforementioned writing and story. I want this to be the first in a multi-part series where I take a look at the Sonic games with major story elements, mostly the 3D console ones, and see if they're engaging narratives in their own right that complement the gameplay well. So let's see what writer Akinori Nishiyama had in store for this more story-based direction for the Sonic series. For the first of our six main campaigns, Sonic's story is the most standard here, just simply stopping Eggman's newest scheme of using a blue creature called Chaos to take over the world. Sonic had spoken before in cartoons, but this was the first major game where he spoke and Ryan Drummond's snarky but fearless take on the character basically defines Sonic for a whole new generation. Marriage? No way! This is a voice that future Sonic voice actors Jason Griffith and Roger Craig Smith would go on to homage and remix in their own ways. Throughout his campaign, Sonic meets every character as you progress as a way to unlock their own campaigns and establish his dynamics of the cast. Tails is the inexperienced but intelligent sidekick, Knuckles is the headstrong rival, Amy is an intense romantic, Gamma is just another robotic threat, and Big the Cat is just vibin'. However, these perspectives do change even slightly when you go into these characters' own stories, just like how you and I have different perspectives on things that only we can comprehend. This brings us to Tails, whose character arc of growing more independent actually ties into his gameplay style involving racing a computer-controlled character, as it's about proving that he's just as competent as his peers. It's a cute little underdog story, even if Tails himself has one of the weaker vocal performances in the game. That's Eggman! I wonder what happened to Sonic? Knuckles' story sees the Echidna on a mission to recollect the scattered Master Emerald pieces, though most of his plot kinda repeats a lot of what Sonic 3 and Knuckles did, getting tricked by Eggman, the rivalry of Sonic, and learning to accept Sonic. While Sonic and Tails are pushing forward in their stories, it's a bit disappointing to see Knuckles stagnate, but I also think that might have been intentional. It shows how serious Knuckles is about the Master Emerald that he may goof up in other social aspects, a character trait that would admittedly get flanderized in later installments of the series. Amy's story has her being chased by a robotic foe who wants to kidnap her new bird friend. After a few chases and encounters of Sonic, she realizes that in order to make Sonic respect her, she must stand up for herself on her own, which is basically the same lesson Tails learned in his story, though it still works here. It's also quite satisfying to defeat the robot who's been chasing you all game in that boss fight. This isn't Amy's strongest showing, but it's a good start for her modern characterization that future games would build off of. As for the controversial among the Adventure 6, Big the Cat is just a chill dude trying to find his best friend Froggy through through various fishing levels. I get why this segment is infamous, but it's very short, and even if Big doesn't do much, he's such a funny fellow who's trying to enjoy his life. He doesn't really care about the overarching story, he just wants his friend back, which might seem a silly thing for a playable character in a story-based game to do, but I found it quite a refreshing pace breaker, even if the fishing mechanics did admittedly need some extra fine-tuning. Big's alright in my book. From the most divisive character campaign to the most love, we have E-102 Gamma. He is an Eggman robot, a part of the E series of bots who get toyed with and punished by Eggman when they fail. After seeing the punishment and talking with a captured Amy Rose, Gamma decides to destroy all the other E series bots, including himself, in order to free the living animals that power all of Eggman's robots. I love how they took what was a cute detail from the Genesis games that played into their environmentalist themes and turned it into a tragic story that makes Eggman a more villainous character. It's a neat contrast from the more goofy side we see in the other character stories. It helps that for a game with a lot of janky cutscenes, Gamma's story has the least amount of jank, and even the jank still present works because he's a robot struggling with his emotions. Gamma is also one of the only playable characters in both this game and the whole Sonic franchise who dies and stays dead, fulfilling his purpose and further adding intrigue to his story, since this is his only appearance. 
Gamma is definitely one of my favorite characters of the whole Sonic franchise, appealing to two things I love a lot in stories. Robots discovering the joys of humanity, and villainous characters turning heel. Then there's the final story, where all the characters' plots converge to give Super Sonic a super-powered boost in order to defeat Perfect Chaos, who by this point, through all the flashbacks and revelations, is revealed to be a corrupted mutant godlike child thanks to the power of the Master Emerald, which all ties back to the history of Knuckles' past lore. It's all neat world-building stuff that does help to make the world of Sonic feel more grand in scope, a sentiment that definitely applies to the final battle against Chaos. But as cool as all that stuff is, I think Sonic Adventure is at its best when it's dealing with character dynamics rather than lore building. The lore building is still good, it's just those character dynamics are so strong and electric that I want to see more of that. Either way, Super Sonic defeats Perfect Chaos, Chaos gets to ascend to heaven, which isn't a joke, he actually does get ascended to heaven in this game, I'm not even kidding, that's what they said. And the whole city's kind of in ruins, but hey, Sonic Adventure is done and dusted with. It's a great first impression and template for a more story-driven Sonic game, even if the voice acting and cutscene animation do make it seem more silly than the text wants it to be, but hey, there's still charm in that silly presentation, which perfectly describes the game. All's well that ends well, right? 